which one wants to go first? In, you're up first. Yeah, um, for those who don't know him, this is Ed Cox. He's a Liberal MLA for Murrumbidgee. And he's going to tell us lots of good things he's doing to advocate on our behalf. Thank you. Um, I won't speak for too long. I try not to speak as much as we said at these events. But I just wanted to touch on, I guess, my best birthday present this year. The 22nd of April was my birthday which happened to be the day that um, I got to see the Council's um, submission to the budget. Um, and I was really impressed at the articulation of some of the key issues that we are facing across, um, not just Western Creek, but the whole electorate. Um, there are places right across the electorate that are still feeling uh, really neglected. Uh, a lot of areas that need some attention, some uplift and some improvement. Uh, and I've been writing to ministers for the entire time, it feels like, since I was uh, elected last year, uh, to try and get this happening. There have been places we've been a little bit su successful, uh, but there are still a lot of areas. Uh, a lot of people want to see a bit of improvement around Western Creek, a bit of improvement to the types of facilities, and we're just starting to see some of that with the roads. Uh, I'm really hoping that we can keep the momentum going and start to see some of the, the aging infrastructure, footpaths, uh, those sorts of things improved. But I'm always interested to hear your views about what you want to see. The other big thing that I've been advocating for that uh, impacts on Western Creek, even though it's not directly in Western Creek, is a town centre for the Longo Valley. Uh, because Western Creek is already under pressure because of the number of people living in Mulungwa. Uh, and the government came out with population projections that said in the next five years, the Mulungwa Valley is going to be even bigger than West, all of Western Creek is now. In fact, all bigger than all of Western Creek will be then. So Mulungwa Valley can't continue to be dependent on Western Creek for everything it needs, otherwise we're going to see too much, too much traffic coming through, we're going to see continued uh, overloading of Western Creek facilities and we need to make sure we're doing the, the forward planning and really getting ahead uh, of the game in Longbow Valley to make sure everyone there has the facilities they need uh, which frees up the space for people in Western Creek uh, so that not everything is overloaded and we can start to see some uplift here. Uh, but look, that, that's a couple of things going on, a couple of things that I've been particularly focused on recently. I'm very happy to take questions uh, or hear from you if there are particular issues you want to, want to view on. Good evening, Ed. Good to see you. And have to cool the park over there. I played it with their walking group, and they're in agreement that some nice coffee tables for a larger group under the trees over there near the bus, just at the west of the bus station across the path, somewhere there, with a waterproof sail. We can get our table and coffees and have there. You can see how the other tables are a couple of blue tables where the florist used to be, but that only fits eight. We often have up to 12 people, or we used to have even more than that, going on our walks. It'd be nice to have an outdoor area. Because some of the coffee shops, well, we used to be at Sakinas, but then we've got re rearranged all the tables, so, and that gets pretty full as well. So there's very limited space for bigger, group, bigger groups. So it sounds like you'd really like to see um, some community resources like coffee table tables put into that was cool at night. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think we've been really consistent in the Liberals on cool at Park and wanting to see it really restored uh, in the planning system back to uh, being a, a real community resource. And, and that sounds to me like the sort of thing that could help increase uh, its utility for the community as well. And maybe a playground 
Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. It's cool. I park um, the one across the road, what we place, just in yes. that area. Yeah. Or yes. Yes. It's like a green space where they've planted a few trees. Is that the one we're talking about? Yes. Yeah, across the road from, from the bus. Yeah, because there's, yeah. no, there's no seating, there's nothing there. No, there's, there's nothing there now, which is one of the challenges. And I think one of the reasons the government looked at it and gone, mm -hmm. before the last election, oh, we could put a car park there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which, um, I think the community managed to really voice its opposition to very clearly. Uh, we as the Bulls came out and said that it, it should stay a community resource and the Greens, the Tony Credit came out and said that it should continue to be a, a community green space. Uh, and, and so that, that stopped. Now it needs to really come back to its original intent in the planning system and, and I think having some community resources in the area might help. Yeah. Yeah, no, that sounds, it sounds like a really good idea. Ed, I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, when the new territory plan gets into the assembly, are you going to stand up, or your sidekick Jeremy, going to stand up and move the Kulo Park you return to open space, not some CFZ whatever zoning? and it be retained for that open parkland community use, not a building or a car park or anything else? I don't know if it will be in that debate. Um, because the way these work is, there is a limited amount of time for each speaker and you only get to talk once. And there is going to be a lot to talk about in this particular debate. Um, but absolutely, this is our position, um, and we will be looking at opportunities. So I've got to work harder to get to the top of your priorities. Okay. <laughs> the top of the list of concerns with this bill. Um, yeah. yeah, but it's not in the bill. But it's the second round when the territory plan goes in there. That's where I want to focus on that. But you can say it every day of the week if you like to. Great, thanks Ed. Any more questions? Mine's a general one. Um, there seems to be a total lack of sporting facilities in Malonga. And not only we, I'm associated with the Gymnastics Club, we've got 1,500 members. Um, and we're just taking in Malonga kids all the time. I know soccer friends are down at Tuggeron, other people are down at at other facilities, there just doesn't seem to be enough that was put in for the number of people that are living in Monaco. Is there anything that can be done? It's not, you know, it's a concern for Western Creek because we're getting overloaded. Um, but really, the bottom line is Monaco should have more facilities. You're absolutely right, and what we've seen in Monaco is a bit of a lack of foresight and planning for the population that's going in there. The ultimate population we're looking at in the long run is like over 80,000 people. Okay? But that is a very significant, very significant uh, town. Uh, it, it, in five years, by the time it's bigger than Western Creek, it'll be bigger than Goma. Right? It is a very significant population base and we need to make sure we've got those sort of facilities that are going to support the community um, so that's part of the, the reason behind the push for a town centre, but it, it goes further as well. It, there are, there's traffic infrastructure, there's sporting infrastructure. Um, and these are the things that people in the long run and most of Creek are bringing up with me all the time. Um, and I know that there's a lot of demand for gymnastics. I mean, it, it was a crowded club there when my daughter first started her baby gymnastics there 11 years ago. So it, <laughs> It's definitely an in-demand facility, and I know that uh, the club for a long time has been looking for opportunities to expand, um, but different things have held them back over that time. Um, and I know that demand for gymnastics across Canberra is high. The Arendelle Club is also really, really busy. Um, and it's a, it is a, a great activity, and I think we should be looking for opportunities. And, enabling people to do good things in that space. Thank you.
get that much at all. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'll come and serve you. You'll make a difference. Ed, just in relation to the last question, um, I've suggested it. I don't know whether I've suggested it here, but I've certainly suggested at least twice at the Long Low Valley Forum where I go, yeah, fairly regularly. Uh, there's a perfect facility in the Long Low Valley for gymnastics and um, other similar indoor sporting activities or other things that you might look, look at, uh, or where there's a need at least, and that's the uh, empty supermarket at the shops. Well, it's my class, but yeah, if you think it's funny having an empty building 100 metres long, uh, completely unused, while people walk around wringing their hands. Yeah, our uh, problem is the height. Uh, sorry? Our problem is the height. Oh, okay, well, I'm not saying it has to be gymnastics. No, and I take the point, I've taken photos. Yeah. Uh, I just think it's something that should be looked at. If I'm, if I'm an idiot for suggesting it, well, so be it. No, but, I don't think um, so. Uh, otherwise, we can just sit there and, you know, grind away and let it sit there empty. I know it's uh, not the government's property, I know there's problems with the family and the owners and all the rest of it. But anyway, if, uh, imagine how long it would take for anybody in ACT government to build something out there. Well, there's something there already and uh, if nobody wants to use it, well, don't come complaining to me. Yeah, um, and I think what you're reflecting on there is the disappointment that I've been hearing from the Long Lake community for a long time about the fact that this building was put there and it just it stayed vacant for so long. Um, and there is no value in something that's not being utilised and not delivering for the community. And, and I laugh because it's become so ironic that, it, that it's vacant. Um, but it, for the community, clearly, it, it's continually a reminder of, of a disappointment and it ought not have been... <laughs> it, it, it ought not have ended up in that situation and it was a situation that was created by a planning change a week before the auction was held for that site. Uh, which limited who was willing to bid for it and what they could do with it. Uh, I'm glad that we're starting to see places open up in, in Coombs, um, but it is still not what it should have been. Um, and I would like to see those spaces utilised. But if the owner isn't willing to um, isn't willing to rent it out at, at rents that are reasonable, then we should be able to fill other spaces and the owner can meet the cost of the building without that income. What I was going to say now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, oh, sorry. I spent something else to say. I did. My wife came back to me. Um, so, uh, Coombs, Coombs shot is actually rocking at the moment, it's cool. believe it or not. Uh, it's maybe not rocking, but rolling at least. Uh, yeah, 80 is great. Uh, sorry? The, the cafe 80 is great. Can't hear what? The cafe. Oh, well, the cafe. Yeah. I mean, there's a pizza shop opening there. There's a couple of small you know, mini supermarkets, which are you know, limited size. Uh, there's now a pub come, wine bar come, restaurant. Um, so, despite all the yeah, things we've all said about it, um, it's actually surprisingly uh, occupied at present. Um, you can still walk into the back of that building, the door to the supermarket's open most of the time. Incidentally, most of you may not know it's not actually cemented. Um, there's no cement floor laid in the, in the, in the um, supermarket area. Look, it's got Buckley's chance of being a supermarket with Woolworths and probably Aldi opening across the way. Um, the, the other thing I was going to say about for some of this, this relates to Western Creek. I mean, I don't want to say too much because I'm, I'm not on the committee for the archery club here, but um, uh, that, that, that club's under threat by, you know, the workstation down there wanting to expand its, its grounds and its scope of work and all the rest of it. Um, and I believe there's some discussions going on 
at the moment where you know, promises made and made about recompensing the club, but it will never um, make up for the disruption uh, to that club if, if the plans go ahead in their previous form. And I, I think there's a new DA coming out, and um, so it's good to hear the tennis club doing well. But um, there's another instance, five hundred metres down the road, where um, the government's actually trying to, uh, you yeah, know, cut off at the knees of an existing and an old club that's very active. We might wander over to this mic. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, John. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, John. And that, that's. Thanks, John. And that, that's clearly we've spoken about it before, and you're not the only person who's raised concerns about that side with me. Um, we are doing some digging to try and work out what's going on. But it, it's clear that when community groups spend years and decades building up uh, and investing into a facility like that, uh, it, it's not just a matter of financial or dollars spread. Um, reimbursement. Uh, there is so much value built up in a facility like that. It, 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 it's really concerning the, the types of stories that, that you've mentioned. And, yeah, I wouldn't like to see us lose uh, such a great facility and such a great club. Thanks. Is there any more questions there for you? Val? The final question? Yeah, I'm just wondering what happened was the final result of the hydrotherapy pool? If there was a result. <laughs> My understanding of hydrotherapy at the moment is that, and, and please Eric can correct me if I say something incorrect, is that it's planned to go into Tuggeranon. Um, so certainly I've heard some concerns about there not being sufficient access for a lot of people in this area uh, and a lot of people have uh, concerned about the capacity and would like to see something else happen more centrally too. Is that the other one in Canberra? Is that one on the north side? There is one on the north side <laughs> and there's also a private hydrotherapy pool uh, in the Wyoming area as well which last time the heard was, was available for bookings if there were organisations that needed Wide. Yes. There's, there's one in Wade managed by Hartley. Yeah, it's not at the hospital. It's not at the hospital. Where's the other side? Where can I come in there? You obviously haven't read our budget letter. I think Ed might have. And the mail, we have written, and you're forgiving me if you haven't, sorry, I've been a bit busy. Um, we made a pretty red hot bid in there to do something locally, and as did the Malongo Forum. Um, it's a common, it's an ongoing concern of <laughs> where, you know, people with a disability wanting to get this therapy so we can get through the week. And what are you doing? You're making us travel. But it actually hurts us to travel in the car to get there or to drive. We've got a bus service that won't take us to Wellcon without changing three times. We've got a bus service that won't take us to the hospital directly. Every step for somebody who needs hydrotherapy hurts. So we put that in our budget letter and we'll put it again and again and when people come here, like MLAs, we will continue to ask. So thank you for raising it, Val, save me raising it. Um, and we'll keep on pushing it. Are there any more questions, Fred? I'll let you sit down, Ed, quickly. What are you so, I'll just continue on with the pool. I did make a suggestion putting it next to the selling I saw that, Val. We'll look at it and pass it on. But thank you. Thanks, Ed. Thank you. And see you. We're not unpleasant people. You're always welcome to come in and talk to us. Every opportunity. And so I'll hand up to Emma now. Um, 
Uh, yes, COVA ACT have been doing a fantastic job of uh, providing people with support to get access to the seniors card. COVA are also a great place to, to get in contact with our other services that might be helpful for people as they're getting older. Any questions? Can I make a comment? There's a bit of an irony but a beachmised 50 place car park is temporary and can be moved, yet the playground can't. Am I getting it wrong? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah, it's an interesting, uh, interesting dilemma there, isn't it? I'm very happy that we don't have the car park, and um, I absolutely was ready to chain myself to a bulldozer if necessary. I, I'd do it again if necessary, but uh, I hope it doesn't come to that. Thanks, thanks, Matt. Okay, well, we've got a few more.